So today we're going to talk about a brand new release from All Powers. So let's start with going to... Yeah, what? What the heck? Hey, the power went out. I know. I can see the power is out. She says stuff's so important. We can't... Just cannot have this stuff failing. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. No, 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 no. Yes, yes, it's good. Today we're going to talk about the All Power R2500 portable power station. We have a kit that includes a 400 watt solar panel kit and we're going to talk about that a little bit more later. And by the way, thanks for stopping by. It's always good to see you. So let's briefly run down the specs so you know what we're talking about. And then of course we'll do a bit of testing. I'm not going to do an unboxing. Yes, it comes in a box. Yes, we took it out. Ta-da! So this is a 2500 pure sine wave inverter with a 4000 watt peak. Now it's a 2016 watt hour capacity and it's expandable up to 20 kilowatt hours. Yes, 20,000 watt hours with a B3000 expansion battery. It's pretty cool because you can just take these batteries and plug them in. It has a 15 milliseconds uninterruptible power supply. Yes, a UPS and we always love that function. Now it has a long life life PO4 battery with over 3,500 charging cycles. Now what this means is that if you charge it and discharge it every day, it would last for 10 years. And of course we're talking a power bank so the battery is super important. I don't want to brush over that life PO4 because first time we saw this was on the R600. Now that's the smaller brother to this one. And of course we did a review on that one and I'll put that link up here so you can go ahead and take a look at that if you're in the market for something maybe a little smaller, a little more portable. But of course when I did that review I talked about that battery here. Really you can have the fanciest digital display, the coolest app, the sleekest design and if it doesn't have a strong and reliable powerhouse under the hood, well it's just crap. Crap that can start a fire and burn your house down crap. Now that's not good. Yeah, what he said. It's safer. It won't start on fire even if you puncture the battery. So that's pretty nice. And because of the quality, the battery has a five year warranty from All Power as well. Now it comes in at 64 pounds. Yes, 64 pounds. You're not going to put this in a backpack or anything like that. It is a beast to carry around, that's for sure. You can charge this on AC and solar at the same time. And they say you can do this entire thing in 45 minutes doing that. It also has a DC input to an XT60 connector which you can put through the solar port. So if you're in a car or something like that using it and you want to charge it in the car, you can use that one as well and charge it from DC. So that's pretty slick. So let's talk about the outputs quick. Of course we have four of the AC outlets, the 120 volt. Also has an RV output connection here. Now that's going to be the input then to an RV camp or something like that. Of course it also has USB outputs. There's two of the USB-Cs, four USB-As. And then it has a DC 5525 and a cigarette lighter port as well. It also has a very detailed digital display and it's really this is one of the nicest ones that I've seen. It is very bright. It has really relevant information on it. It just makes sense the way that it's laid out. They also do have an app which connects to this via Bluetooth and that'll allow you to see the status, what's happening with it. Also allows you to do some configuration and I'll put some of that up here while I'm talking here so you can see what that looks like. So the first part of the testing we're going to do is I actually want to check this solar panel out just to make sure that it does its thing. And we do have that 400 watt panel. So let's take a walk outside. We'll plug it in, see what happens. Now this is the foldable solar panel and this happens to be the 400 watt and they do have different sizes of this available on a website. And if you get a discount like from Alien Drones and I'll put that information in the description how you can get that discount, you can get a really good deal on a kit like this. So make sure you double check the website because you probably save yourself a lot of money. So the straps are here that hold this together that'll allow us to start unfolding it here. So let's go ahead and get those. Okay. On the other side here, you're going to see a little pouch. And this pouch is where it keeps all the accessories, you know, some cables and things like that, different adapters. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull this cable out because I know we're going to go to the power bank here. So I want the pouch is the first end here. Fold him out. There we go. I'm just going to go ahead, 
pulled these out a little piece by piece here. There are some little stands on the back here and I'm gonna pull those out as well so I can kind of set those up as I'm going along. But that's actually pretty darn close to pointing the sun. And now we're up to 338 watts input from the solar panel alone. So that's pretty darn good. All right, so I had to move the solar panel a little bit because the sun is moving while I'm doing this test. Uh, so I shifted a little bit here. But what I want to do is I want to plug in the solar panel and I'm going to do that right now just to kind of prove what we're talking about here. And we're going to plug in the solar panel, let it charge. Then we're going to plug in the AC, check the wattage on that as well, make sure that that's charging. And then we're going to plug in a load just so we can make sure that it can charge and then provide a load at the same time. All right, so right now we have the solar panel connected. So we're sitting at uh, 260 watts just from the solar panel. So let's go ahead and plug in the AC here as well. See what happens there. Okay, 968, 1,209 watts. Looks like it's stabilized there, so that's good. 1,213 watts input, 87%. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug in the load now, the 1200 watt little heater that we have here and uh, see what it looks like. And indeed it is uh, taking 1250 watts out, which is, that's what this, uh, that's what this little heater says is it's a 1200 watt heater. So I don't need to blow on at me today though, okay. So indeed we have 1235 watts out, plus we do have 560, 600 watts in at the same time. So yes, indeed, the uh, solar panel and the AC are charging at the same time, and we are running a 1200 watt output as well. So uh, pretty nice. So it seems to do what they say it's gonna do here. So something I'm gonna do right away, as long as we have it hooked up like this, is this is an uninterruptible power supply, a UPS. And that means if I pull the AC and the solar charging out of this, this 1200 watt heater should stay on the whole time and not even glitch. It should be a 15 millisecond turnover time or switch over time. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to watch this and I'm going to see if this stays on or if somehow it shuts off. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out the solar panel first. Okay, and the solar panel is off right now. And our output is still 1199 watts here. So let's now go ahead and we're going to pull the AC out. There we go. Now the heater is still on, it's blowing hot here. The fan never glitched or did anything weird, didn't give us any sounds, anything like that. It's still showing us 1,229 watts output with zero input, which is what we want to see. So that tells us that the UPS then is working as well. So if you have this all plugged in in the middle of the night to a CPAP machine or something like that, and the power goes out, you'll never even know it. It'll just switch over like it's supposed to. So nice function and it works like it's supposed to. So with that, let's head into the studio and do some more testing on the wattage output of this power bank. So you'll notice that we do have more items plugged in and sitting here on the table than when we went outside to test that solar panel. And what we've done is we've plugged in a cord to the 120 volt outlet here. We have it plugged into this power strip along with a watt meter here so we can monitor the wattage. Now this little light here is just to show you if the power is on to these things or not because if it overloads or if we lose power or something like that, this little light will go off. So let's go ahead and turn this on so we can see that the power is coming out of here. There we go. So now we know that these items are powered over here. So this watt meter that I have here, I just want to check the kind of the accuracy of this just to make sure that this is reading what it says. This is only 1800 watt maximum. It's just a little bit smaller one. So I'm going to check it up to like 1200 watts or so, make sure that it's the same. And then I'm going to unplug it because I just don't want to burn up this watt meter. But then we'll know that the readout is accurate. So we can just use the readout on the front of the power supply and it'll be just fine. So let's go ahead. Now we see we have power to it. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the first stage. So they're both showing about 700 watts or so, which is about right for this first stage of this little portable heater here. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug this because now at least we know that the power meter that's on the power bank is accurate. So we can just read that right off of there and we'll know what the watts are going to be. Okay, so let's turn this one on, get up to our baseline. Okay, let's take this one up. See what happens. There's 2,500. Let's put this a little higher. What the hell is that? I don't know. So 
So that little pulsing there did kick out. It was about 2,800 watts or so that I saw. Uh, I will double check that. I'll put it up here on the screen. But I don't know what that little uh, pulsing was like. It must have been at an area where it was trying to cut out, but didn't quite cut out yet. But I don't, I'm not really a fan of that pulsing. Hopefully that's not typical. Let's start again here. Okay, so this is back at baseline. Let's turn this back to our maximum. Should give us 1,200 watts. Okay, let's turn this back on. We know that runs it up to 2,500 and it was fair there. So let's try this. That should be 2,500. There we go, that is 2,500. Let's just turn these on fan here. No heat. Okay, now that did shut off more like it. Okay, it looks like about 2,900 or so again. But uh, 4,000, we were never, never able to get up there before it shut off. So does it work? I would say that it does work according to the specs. It does hold that 2,500 watts, no problem, which is important. The 2,500 is really the key. If you get some small spike at a second or two, a little bit higher, should be able to handle that. And it did go up to about 2,800 pretty easily. It does have some peak. I don't think it's 4,000 unless it's just a millisecond, but that's okay with me. I'm not, I'm not too bad with that as long as it goes there momentarily and go, drops back down like you started a motor or something that would still be okay. So now that we have a little bit of testing behind us, I'm gonna go through and give you my likes and dislikes. So first, I do like that the battery has a five year warranty. Really important from a baseline that we have a good warranty because that tells us hopefully that this is gonna last us a long time. If it doesn't, we should be able to get it replaced. Second, it is an actual UPS. Now, as we did outside, you saw that I had it plugged in, disconnected it, and indeed it switched over, no problem. It's a real UPS, really a nice thing. A third, I really do like that display. I think it's clean. I think it has a lot of good information here. Some of the smaller ones just have a few lights or things like that, but this is really good information. Next, I love that you can charge with the solar and then the AC at the same time. And along with that, you can also discharge, which goes into that UPS function we talked about. So not only can you charge with both things, but you can discharge and have things running at the same time. Lastly, I really do like that it has the expandable capacity. You can plug in additional banks up to the 20 kilowatt hours of capacity, and you can kind of daisy chain them if you don't need the full 20K. You can just add a couple and make it a little bit bigger. So that's pretty slick. And of course, nothing is perfect. And there's some things that were a little odd here with that over wattage that we had it kind of flicker on and off while it was figuring out what to do. I'm not a big fan of that. I'd rather it just shut off. Next, it is heavy probably need some type of a wheeled cart or dolly. Now, I know you can buy one for $25 from Home Depot, and you could do that, of course, but it'd be nice if they would have one that was custom made that would fit this. So all that being said, I haven't mentioned the price yet, and I'll put that up here, what it is for this new R2500. And of course, because it's brand new, they do have some deals going on right away, some kind of early bird deals, but they do have a combo, which has not only the R2500, but a 400 watt solar panel as well. Now that's a heck of a good deal uh, for this price. And we are fortunate enough on this channel that All Powers was kind enough to offer Alien Drones viewers an additional discount. So I will put that in the description so you can even get a bigger discount. And if you prefer Amazon, of course they were kind enough to give us a discount for Amazon as well. And I'll put that information up here and in the description so you can go check those out. Of course, if there's something that I missed or some question you have, maybe for me or for All Power, feel free to put it in the comment section below. Happy to help if I can. So I really do appreciate it that you made it this far in the video. I really do. I always enjoy doing these. So take care. See you in the next video.